Hey guys, it's Bonnie from Dwelling Logs. Today I want to talk to you guys about our year end wrap up, kind of wrap up. We decided to homeschool year round, so this is kind of just our tradition time or transition time. So, anyways, what I want to do though is let you guys know how the last year went, what we used. I want to show you guys or at least give you a little feedback on the gather round units that were our favorites and what maybe weren't our favorites. Um, I have the gather round homeschool planner here and I have used their um, reading like books to be read pages to mark down sort of uh, our, our favorite thoughts or our thoughts on all the different units. So I'll go through that with you guys. I'll let you guys know how math went this year things that we bought maybe you did use or didn't use <laughs> so also this year was really different see i started this year in the fall working more than full-time hours very very crazy busy i went a little overboard on the working hours from home um and so that went from september actually august really really busy hours all the way till the end of january and a little bit into february then my hours, uh, you know, slowed down to, you know, maybe 20 hours a week or so until the end, actually just the beginning of April. And so I really have a contrast now. I know what it's like to try to be a homeschool mom and work full time. Oh my goodness. You mamas out there who, who work full time and homeschool your kids, kudos to you. It is a lot of work, a lot of thought. We survived, I would dare to say we did thrive at times, and so I'd kinda like to talk to you guys a little bit about that. Um, but I also can contrast that with like right now, I'm taking a break from work, and so it's definitely a totally different world and a different mom that my kids get. Um, also, I have little one sitting right here, and so she's playing with Spider-Man and giving him a bath right now, and I don't know what kind of noises she's gonna make during this video, but I gotta get it done because you guys, it's June already, and I wanna talk about what I want to do after these books. So I got a few videos lined up in my, in my imagination anyways. So let's talk about the gather on units that we did first. Now we started, we actually, okay, so we ended last year doing Indigenous Peoples in May. Excellent, excellent unit. We did have quite a few edits to submit because we got it hot off the presses, but you guys, those edits have been fixed already. Amazing unit. Please do Indigenous Peoples if you're watching this because it's so good. Really, really deep. Oh my goodness, deep and wonderful. Um, as also, um, I am a second generation homeschool mom, by the way, and I have three kids. I should let you guys know, um, my oldest is almost eight, and my next son is almost six, and then I have a little girl who's going to be turning three in the fall. So those are my kids' ages for Gather on Homeschool last this past year. Um, we were using the early reader level for my almost eight-year-old, and we were using the pre-reader le reader level for my almost six-year-old. Of course, they started the year younger. <laughs> anyway, so those are the two levels that we're using. So I don't really have a lot of feedback on the older levels, but I can tell you our experience with the units at the levels that we were at. And of course the teacher's guide that we all use and things like that. Um, I do have videos on gather round or you could go look at them. If you're not familiar with the curriculum, it's a unit study style curriculum that you do as a family, no matter what ages, it's all subjects, but math, that's just gather round in a nutshell. And we love it. We love it. Disclaimer, I, I have been working with them um, just until the beginning of April. Now I'm taking a break. So I did work for them, but these videos, you guys, it's my true opinion, okay? Um, totally not biased. I'm never asked to do videos or anything like that. That's not part of my job at all. Uh, no association, no like benefits for me, for clicks or anything like that. So just me, homeschool mom, to you. <laughs> Okay, so we did Indigenous Peoples in May, and then in the summer when we decided I, we would like to try to homeschool year-round, we uh, started with Asia. We decided to homeschool year-round because my husband is a farmer, and his busiest season is in the summer. And so I thought it really makes no sense for us to take our holidays in the summer. And Spider-Man is growling right now. <laughs> so anyways, so we are, would like to take some more specific weeks when daddy's more free, maybe some more free time in the winter. So schooling year round should hopefully, which so far is, has proven itself to work really well for our family. So we did Asia last summer. We took a little longer than a month to do it. Loved it. My kids loved it. Asia is from year one of Gather Round. It's one of their connecting continents units from year one. And we found it to be really, really good. My kids still remember things from that unit. Um, the Connecting Continents units are so much fun. They're really good. So Asia was a win. Um, Asia is on our favorites list, yes. And then we purchased year two, the full package, the lifer package and everything for year two. 
and so we kicked off the fall with antarctica and antarctica did make our favorites list you guys antarctica we loved it like so 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 much we cannot wait to do it again that being said please know there were quite a few edits that were submitted they should be totally fixed now they even rewrote some portions of the teacher's guide to make it a little more interesting and word friendly for younger kids but we still liked it after it was hot off the presses we got version one we still liked it we did submit some edits in the early reader level i remember submitting probably more edits than the teacher's guide um, but I know that they have, they, they always do the edits at the end of the year so that now for their summer sale, um, they're all done. So I don't think you have to worry about that anymore, but really great topics. Um, the early reader level was the only thing that maybe I had a little bit of feedback on, but definitely one of our favorite units of the year. Um, next up was Oceania. That also made our favorites list. We loved it. It was another connecting continents unit. So it had animals and it had, you know, geography and so many tie-ins about um, ecosystems and ecology and being good stewards of the earth and it had some World War II connections in there in the teacher's guide that for some reason just drew my kids in. They really liked that. Um, so we loved it. Um, artists we did after that. Artists did not make our favorite unit but it was really good and I see all the time that it's family's favorite unit. So it's, it's a really good unit. I think as far as the topic goes it didn't pull my boys in. Um, the way it did other families. So that one did not make our favorites list, but it's still really, really good. Um, then of course we did Christmas. We always love Christmas. Um, I got to help with redoing some of the images this year um, and some of the line art stuff too and painting and it was really, really fun. So it was redone. We did it last year. We did it again this year. Totally love it. We're planning on doing it again this Christmas or this December, although they're planning on coming out with a new Christmas unit for this year. So we're going to have to decide what we're going to do. Really, really, really good though. I really liked it. Um, there were some activities in the notebooks that are just so good for pulling your kids into being giving and gracious and thinking of others. It's very Jesus focused and very giving focused, taking the focus in a very good and loving way off of ourselves at Christmas. And um, that, that Christmas unit really does that. Um, next we did Inventions and Ideas. Great unit, definitely on the favorite, favorite list. Um, it is really cool, the unit project for the month is the kids get to make their own invention. Although I have to say that wasn't even our favorite part. The most favorite part was just that the lessons kept pulling my kids in. We were learning about all these inventors and I think every day it seemed it seemed like if I remember right after every lesson my kids are going like wow like an ordinary person can invent something or I felt like they just connected with the people and I could tell that their wheels were turning like what would I invent how would I take an invention and make it better and so it was just fantastic fantastic I love the illustrations and inventions and ideas I helped with those they were some of my favorite favorite things to paint I think out of all of my painting units this year inventions was my favorite one to paint for um, we also did underground to Canada wonderful like right up there with indigenous peoples um, oh my goodness you guys underground to Canada it's a novel study it we did it uh, in February for Black History Month and it was so impactful for my kids. It's gently approached, um, but not glossed over. It's, it's, a, it's a really good combination. If you have younger kids, you can approach it with them, um, but it doesn't just like gloss over the horrific side of things either. I have a whole video on Underground to Canada. I will link that below too if you wanna know more of my opinion on sort of why I do it with my younger kids because I think it's just fantastic and it really, really touched our hearts and that to me is the most important thing. I want my kids, I don't want to shy away from these topics and I don't want to approach them in a, in a forceful or, or too mature way and Underground to Canada really helped me as a parent approach this topic in, in a good way that really impacted my kids, brought them to tears without traumatizing them. So yeah, bottom line for that. We also did Ancients this year. Ancients I did actually submit quite a few edits, but again, they're gonna be doing all the edits before their summer sale, so all those should be fixed. Um, Ancients we really, really liked. I recommend something that isn't in this unit, 
you're encouraged to do a timeline and something that is not in the timeline um, prompt in the book is all the ages like the stone age the iron age the bronze age and so I just recommend if you're doing a timeline on your wall what we did is we got pictures of stone and bronze and copper and all those things and we just put it on our timeline as we were pasting different things on I really felt that those those ages to mark them out for visual is really really helpful we had a lot of library books for that one so easy to find library books for this by the way I never go by the by the library lists or the recommended book, book lists in these. They're great. They try to make them living books. So if you're Charlotte Mason, the recommendations are wonderful. It just seems to be hard to get them at my local library. So what I do when we go for a new unit, I just look for my own books. I get the topic and we look for our own stuff. So it works really, really good and we love our library. So that's really good. And right now, uh, the unit that we're doing, oh yes, and we did Easter. You guys, Easter, oh, I forgot, I had a few teacher's guides here. So Easter, I painted for Easter, um, really, really good unit, really touching, totally Jesus-focused. We did the Passover lesson, which is optional at the end. Lovely, lovely family traditional unit. We will be doing that every single year for sure. Really quickly, there's the Inventions and Ideas um, teacher's guide. And I ended up getting a copy I bought a copy of the new Antarctica Teacher's Guide for the next time we do it because we definitely will be redoing this one. We loved it. And then Underground to Canada, I painted for this one too. Um, I love this one. I love that picture. Um, anyway, so that's another Teacher's Guide I have. And then Botany is what we're doing right now. Botany, you guys, is so fun. It's so fun. We like, we can't stay inside. We just, we go outside all the time. 100% like botany. I'm hardly finding any edits in it. Um, the art is beautiful. I did not help with the art for this one. They're just my beautiful, wonderful team did all the art for it. It's awesome. It's really, really good. Strongly, strongly recommend botany. It will be in our favorites list as well as Easter. Like almost everything is our favorite. And there was no unit, don't get me wrong, there's no unit that was not good. It was just that we have some that are like, really whatever pulls my kids in whatever they really respond to goes on the favorites list for sure okay for gather round i do print at home mostly i did splurge on a few of the uh, print product teachers guide i love the print product that comes from gather round you guys it's such good quality so to save money i print at home um, because i can get toner for my laser printer fairly cheaply um, but every once in a while, I just splurge on a teacher's guide. I also often will have my teacher's guide on my tablet instead of on paper, and that also saves a little bit of cost. But I always print out the student books. Oh, something else I was going to tell you guys about botany. There's a whole bunch uh, in the student books. There's a lot of same page alerts. I love that. I know there's some families that would rather all the levels be super different, so then when they repeat a unit, um, the kids are doing very different activities. I personally love it when we have the same or similar activities. For example, um, like today, we've switched so that my oldest is now doing early elementary and my youngest is doing early reader. So for example, here's a word search page that he's on right now that's for early elementary. And then here's for early reader. So they're like the, essentially the same kind of thing, but this word search is a little bit easier. One will write more, one will cut and paste or dry, draw lines more. Um, I love same page alerts because it allows us to just have the same topics and talk about the same things around the table even after the teacher's guide is done. So you'll notice that even in year two, um, there were some units that didn't have a lot of same page alerts in the student notebook. So each student level was learning about very different things. And then some units, there were more same page alerts. So I'm a big fan of the same page alerts. I think there was even a little bit more of that in, in inventions and ideas, but botany for sure, I think out of all the year two units, this is the most that I've seen for same page alerts. And for me and my family, what I want, I'm a big fan of that. I love it, I love it. Also really quickly, a big change for year two units is they added seat work pages. Now you don't see these in the year one units, um, seat work pages were really, really cool. It asks, it gives you guys spelling words for the week. Um, I was one of the people that emailed uh, last year saying I'd like a little more spelling than year one. Some families liked that there was less spe spelling year, year one. We loved 
the year one units that we did so much. I just wanted a little more spelling. So I love that there's spelling words on these seat work pages. Um, really, really, really good. We don't overuse these. These are meant so that you can copy, uh, copy it every day for your kids to fill out. There's a place to put in, I think, the weather, what you're working on. Um, yeah, like what day is it? Write your name, today's date, the weather, the temperature, what time is it? Just to give the kids more practice. We only fill these out though once a week. And what we started to do at the end of this year is we started to cut out our spelling list and put it on a bookmark. And so we would practice our spelling every day. And our favorite ways to do that was to text it to daddy, number one way. Also, we got into typing. My, my oldest loves to feel really big and important and type it on a keyboard. Um, also, we have like bananagrams, like those letter tiles, like Scrabble tiles putting them together like that. That's a little more time consuming, but the kids have fun with it. So that's really good. So spelling we try to do every day, but otherwise our family just uses these seat work pages once in a week. Um, also, I've been watching Rebecca's lives and in year three, they are going to be putting, uh, and actually at the end of year two here. So farming and food and the creepy crawlies unit has more spelling and vocabulary worked into the rest of the student pages. So I'm curious, we haven't done those units yet. So that might be coming a little bit more spelling within the unit. Um, so we may go completely to the seat wear pages just once a week next year. We will, we'll have to see how it goes. So that was kind of new for this year. Um, really, really loved your two units. Really, really loved your one units. They are, they are different. Each unit has its own feel, has its own um, highlights and kind of style to it. And so I would say every unit is very individual. And my biggest recommendation, if you are overwhelmed and you don't know which units to do with your kids, I would show them the list and I would ask them to choose. I'm really excited to learn more about the membership that they're going to be announcing this summer because I think that choosing our units with our kids will draw them in in a topical way so that we can really engage them in, in the units. Because there's some topics that just won't jive. Like, like artists with my kids. Everyone says that the artist unit is great. And it was. I thought it was fantastic. But it didn't capture my kids. And so I think that it's really good if we can just have them involved in the picking and choosing process. So that we can make sure that we have a little bit of interest led in our education as well. Okay, the last thing I should show you is the Ready to Read program that I love, but I will be honest with you and say we did it very casually. We did not get it done every day. Um, and so this is a goal to keep going <laughs> more. Actually, this isn't Ready to Read, sorry. This is Letters and Numbers. I did purchase the Ready to Read, but I don't feel that my, my youngest son is quite ready for that one yet. So we started with Letters and Numbers, the first one. Um, and it was really good. It was a little bit under him, but we were waiting for the other units to come out. So once the other units came out, we went from letters and numbers one to letters and numbers three, the jungle one. Number two is the, the farm on the farm. If I can figure this out. But number three is in, I think it's called in the jungle. These are really, really big books. Here we go. In the jungle, this guy. Oh, oh, there we go. My friend Ramon and I painted all the animals for this one. They're so cute. Um, anyways, and so this was really good, you guys. The Letters and Numbers program is fantastic. It's not much to add on for your younger kids if you're already doing Gather Round. I know I really debated last year when I ordered um, my, my year two, I thought, this is going to be too much. I don't want too much. I want minimal. I want to be able to have room in my day to springboard off to my own ideas and things like that. Um, but I got it anyways. <laughs> and so I thought, well, I'm just going to try it. But the teacher's guide reading is short, concise, fun, informative. There's a little Bible connection in there. Um, sometimes we did that. Sometimes we didn't. Um, and then they only have three little work pages in their workbook. And they kind of have a routine system to it. It's very well thought out. Um, I used to tutor preschoolers with autism. So I have uh, a bit of a background with like early childhood education and sort of the way uh, child psychology sort of works and building on skills and things like that. And when I looked at this, I thought, wow, so much thought has been put into how to teach your kids 
letters, numbers, writing. And so the first two letters and numbers are supposed to be just kind of introducing them. And then the three and four letters and numbers are basically going over A to Z again and from numbers one to 20 again, but this time learning how to write them as well. And so I found it absolutely fantastic. Wouldn't change a thing about this, this program at all. Definitely want to keep using it. Um, we'll see where my son's at in about a month or two. We may skip letters and numbers four and go straight to ready to read if he can read three letter words. Um, but if not, we will stick with letters and numbers. We'll just have to juggle that and decide. But really, really happy with this, with this program and surprisingly so. Okay, let's talk about other stuff. I bought a Becca Spelling Poetry. I think we only did a few pages of this and we didn't do any more the whole rest of the year. I found it downstairs. I was like, oh, we didn't do anything. So we were very delighted with the spelling this year. Like I said, I thought it was a little light in year one. So I had purchased this after a year one units and I didn't use it because I was very happy with all the spelling involved in year two. So I still have this around. We'll probably still use this. We can cover up the grade one. It doesn't have to be grade one. We can use this for for something sometime, or if we want a little more practice, I don't know, we'll probably just recycle it. Um, and then for Bible, um, we didn't do this consistently as much as we did last year. We did it actually quite a lot more in the fall. And so for Bible, we really, really like more than words. I love, love, love this curriculum for Bible study. It's supposed to be like morning basket in a book with like art pictures and like art studies and, and things, but it really just takes like it's like a Bible study for little kids that gives them really meaty things to chew on in their language. And I'm all for that. That's so good. No fluff. It's not just Bible stories. It's deep. And it's really, really connecting with my kids. So love this book. Still doing it for Bible. We still have that much to do. <laughs> and then for math, because Gather on Homeschool is all your subjects with math. We don't supplement unless I find something that like, I like like a printable that someone's selling or whatever, then maybe we'll do that uh, for a couple weeks or something like that. But I do not supplement gather round homeschool at all. And they are all subjects but math. And so we have number skills K5, which my little son did, and arithmetic two, which my bigger son did. So this is a Becca. I grew up on a Becca, love a Becca. You'll see my other videos when I talk about a Becca. I think it's great, it's colorful, it's wonderful until grade four. Um, if you like a Becca, or if you're interested in a Becca, I don't want to scare you away or say you shouldn't do it after grade four or after grade three, but um, if you do, I would highly encourage you to do the DVD series because um, I know for myself going through a Becca, what happens is in the student book, the teaching isn't enough for them to do it independently anymore in their workbooks. It's designed for a classroom. So if you're the kind of mom that has a chalkboard behind you and you take the teacher's guide and you do all the lessons, a Becca is probably a really good fit. But if you're looking for a math where you want your kids to transition into more independence, you're either going to have to switch curriculum or get the DVD sets. So um, either way is really good. I like to teach my kids math. I don't, I try to stay away from technology uh, during our school time because we have a lot of technology in our evenings and things like that. So I stay away from the DVD sets. So this is actually our last year um, using uh, Becca. Uh, now he, my son is in grade three. He's actually at a grade four level. Thanks to Becca, you're awesome. Um, I do, I really do like Becca. <laughs> um, anyway, so we're going to be switching his math. And for my younger son, um, he has a style of learning that does not fit a Becca. So he did do K-5. Um, we did have to supplement with other kinds of learning to get him through it, but he got all the way through it, all the way to the end. And so we are actually going to be switching his math as well. Stay tuned for what we're using in the coming year to find out what we switched to. I've actually chosen two different curriculums to switch the boys to. So this is our last year with Abeka math. I will miss it. I love the bright colors. Really, really good math to start out with. If you're starting kindergarten grade one, you're not sure where to start. Fantastic math. Um, if your kids um, will be will be good with just a workbook. You don't need a lot of fuss. It's cheaper because all you need is a workbook. But as I found out this year, if you have a, a child who really 
benefits from tactile learning and touch play and more, more visuals than just paper, then you may want to look elsewhere. So it all depends. But thankfully, as homeschool moms, we get to change and morph and ditch and cross off pages and be in control of our curriculum however we want. So that's really good. I always tell people, remember, remember you're the lead learner, first of all, I love that term. And also remember that this curriculum does not own you. You are in control of your curriculum. Even if you have a curriculum that everyone says is just awesome, this is not controlling you. You are the boss of it. You can skip things, you can cross things out, you can add to, you can do whatever you want. So just own that. Um, otherwise, I think that's about it. I kept it really minimal this year. So I guess here at the end, I should explain a little bit. So while I was working very, very lots of hours, like I had quite a few 50 hour weeks, quite a few 60 hour weeks and a few 70 to 80 hour weeks. <sighs> it was a little bit nuts for a while. And we got through and we survived and we survived with some routine. And I think the best part about our routine while I was working was our mornings. And most of my work I could do very late at night. Um, I would sacrifice my sleep to get my work done which wasn't healthy, which is why I'm taking a break. <laughs> but let me tell you about our routine because it worked really well this year. We actually found a really good groove and it might just work for you. So we did a morning morning basket style morning where we would wake up at about seven o'clock and we would actually go straight to the couch for blankets and cuddles and we would start our morning basket. So I would be doing whatever I could that was reading. So that would mean our teacher's guide. I would read our teacher's guide. I would be doing our, oh, I forgot this here. We would be doing our learn to read books. So um, this year, my, my almost eight year old, he went from doing elephant piggy books at the beginning of the year to now he's reading like anything. Um, he's got his action Bible that he's reading every day and loves and he's, he's doing really, really well. Um, so we would do our reading time. Um, my next son, he, he's doing law books for reading time, so we'd have some reading practice with him. Didn't do as much reading practice as I would have liked to, but it was in our morning basket, so we could. We actually switched to reading once a week, which wasn't quite enough, so I used to read every day um, with him. So I think we have to get back to the daily reading uh, so that he can learn a little bit, a little bit quicker. So Bob books, love those for learning to read. We love elephant and piggy books, by the way. They're so funny. Kids love them. They're so awesome. Um, so we would do those. Um, we would do any kind of Bible memorization. Basically anything that we could do on the couch that didn't require a pen and paper and a table, we did um, in our morning basket time. And even sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes I would even have my kids work notebooks on a clipboard so that we could actually still write on the couch if you know they were taking notes during or doing their notebooking pages during our teacher's guide reading. And so that worked really good. And usually after I finished reading the teacher's guide, they usually got a little hungry and then we'd move everything to the kitchen table. And I was a big fan this year of doing school while we were eating at the same time. Sometimes while one kid was munching on his Cheerios, I was writing answers that he was giving me in the book um, and so we got things done like that because I needed more time to put into work. So we were trying to find ways to kind of mesh it together. And there's nothing my kids like more than taking turns with me writing in their book. They love it. Math and everything. They still give me the answers, but we take turns writing. So that works really, really good. And then, um, so yeah, so then we'd have breakfast and then we'd finish up our notebooking pages. We might do something if we had time. We didn't do a lot of extra things, extra activities or hands-on things at the beginning of this year when I was working a, a lot because I just didn't have the time. But each day we were pretty much done by noon, uh, done our school. So then the kids would have independent play time. Um, we had a lot of different strategies this year with screens. We started off the school year with they didn't get screens until school was done. But because we were being very efficient at school, they were being done by noon and then they were having the rest of the day like with free screen time. And I was like, no. <laughs> and so um, what we did is if mommy had any meetings, they got free screen time. And um, what we did is we did a 430 cutoff. So if you, you must finish your school to get screens, 
and screens start at 4.30. So if they were finished by noon, they had free play for the, after, for the rest of the afternoon, and then at 4.30 they could have screens. Then, of course, I interrupt that for supper time and everything, and they're in bed by 8. So that was our routine for most of the year, and it worked really, really well because I needed uh, the work time. I needed to find time somewhere. Not to say that everything was perfect. My house was in shambles, <laughs> and, uh, and it was a little bit much. And so now that as the lighter load came in, um, I have kind of relaxed our routine a little bit. So I am looking forward to, um, you know, going with the flow this summer, being very fluid, and then we will see what kind of routine works really well for us come the fall. But it was really, really nice. We got done everything that we set out to do. We got our units that we wanted to get done, done. Um, we did not complete every year two unit, but that was not necessarily the goal. We just wanted to keep working away at them. Um, we got our math books done, which I really wanted to get done. Our math strategy, because everybody knows that not every day is a great math day. <laughs> Sometimes you get stuck on a concept or, or you just have a day where you just have to throw in the towel and just say, you know what, tomorrow, we'll start fresh. And so I always find that math is one of those subjects that can really easily get behind. So my little trick for math um, is to do two lessons a day. And so it's really, it was really good for, uh, for a Becca. So my son in grade two, he would do he, his worksheets. He would have to do two worksheets back and front um, for math for two lessons. And then my younger son, he would have to do one back and front page on his K-5. And that was two lessons. So two full pages of math for one and one full page of math for my kindergarten guy. And, and that was really good. So that kept our heads above water and we were done our math. Um, actually, we just we we could have been done at the beginning of May, but we really dawdled. <laughs> so, anyways, just a couple weeks ago, we finished up our math books, so we are ready for our new math books to come. Okay, so that's it. So I will be hitting you guys with another video of what is coming up for the curriculum and math that we've chosen, and the units that we're most excited about coming up, as well as I do want to do a homeschool video on the homeschool tools and things that I have that I really really like. Um, sort of homeschool essentials, if you will. And so those two ideas are coming up, but I still have to film it and brainstorm it a little bit. I kind of do these videos off the fly and not super consistently, so you're going to want to ring that little, or like touch the little bell if you subscribe, because um, you never know when I'm going to put a video out. <laughs> anyway, thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope you guys have a great homeschool day, or if you're already on summer break, then have a fantastic summer break. And we will talk to you guys next time. Bye.